Hello, my name is Geraldine Edgar, and I'm the author of this book, Vehicle Aerodynamics, Testing, Modification and Development. What I want to do in today's video is talk about reducing aerodynamic drag from wheels and tyres. Let's take a look. First thing to take on board is if we didn't have to drive around in cars that had wheels and tyres, we would be able to have so much lower aerodynamic drag. Why? Because wheels and tyres are responsible on modern cars for about 30% of the overall drag of the car. That's right, about a third of total vehicle drag comes just from the wheels and tyres. Why? Why do they cause so much drag? Let's look at that first before we look at how we can reduce it. So the first type of drag is caused especially by open spoked wheels spinning around, churning up the air. Now, if you think of a, an electric fan, it knows we take, it takes energy to rotate the fan blades and therefore push air. Well, on a wheel, it takes energy to rotate the wheel, spinning those blades like those spokes through the air. So you can see straight away, if you're thinking ahead, if we stop those spokes being exposed to the air, we might be able to reduce drag, and we'll get to that in a minute. So the first type of drag is caused by those spokes spinning through the air, uh, displacing the air, causing the air to become turbulent, and so on. The second type of drag caused by wheels and tyres is that the wheels spinning around upset the flow on the bodywork of the car and especially upset the flow behind the wheels. Now, lowest drag comes from having attached airflow passing across the surface of the car. And attached airflow is when the air is sliding along the bodywork. Keeping that flow attached is particularly difficult after a wheel where we've got the wheel churning the air up, spinning around, how do we then get the flow attached behind that wheel? Now here, if we have a look at the tufts, you can see there, little wool tufts stuck on, you can see that one separated, that one's spinning around in free air, the airflow is not sliding along. Whereas at least that one there, you can see the airflow is sticking to the surface. Now, I've improved the airflow behind the wheel by adding this uh, flat centre disc and that's because it's no longer churning up the air in the same way. So two reasons for drag so far from wheels and tyres. The spokes of the wheel churning through the air and upsetting the airflow and slowing the spokes rotation. And the second way is that the airflow behind the wheels on the bodywork of the cars is upset by that churning action of the wheels. There's another way as well that they increase drag. Now, total car drag is drag coefficient, CD, multiplied by the projected frontal area of the car. And the projected frontal area of the car is what you see in this sort of image. We can see the height, the width, and we can also see if we go down to the bottom, the tyres increase that projected frontal area. We can see them as part of that frontal bodywork pattern. So if we can reduce the frontal area of the tyres, the area that's exposed, we will reduce projected area, staying with me, and therefore we will reduce overall drag. We don't change the car's drag coefficient, but we change that projected frontal area. So how do we do these things? How do we reduce drag? Well, obviously if we can prevent those spokes of the wheel being exposed to the air, we'll be able to reduce that churning action, that drag caused by churning action. And it used to be said, like this Salt Lake racer, we just cover the whole surface of the wheel and that will reduce that um, churning action. And of course it will, but life isn't very simple. In aerodynamics, it's not simple. So we might reduce that churning action, but we might upset other air flows and therefore increase drag overall. In some cars, test results have shown that full wheel covers do not decrease drag as much as leaving a little part of the wheel exposed to airflow, and that is the case. So, cars like this Tesla Model S, for example, a really interesting technical paper written on the wheel design of that car, 
leaving a little bit of the spoke area open. So airflow coming under the car could pass out through those wheels, those front wheels, diverge outwards, uh, actually gave lower drag than completely enclosing the wheel. And there's another reason not to completely enclose a wheel too, and that's brake cooling. I've, I've read um, people say, oh, well, I've got a, a EV. I don't need any brake cooling because of regen. Yeah, what happens if your battery's full? Um, what happens if, if there's a failure in the regen system? You still need plenty of brake action, physical brake action. And so all road cars and obviously all race cars do need uh, cooling of the brakes by some airflow. So leaving a little bit of a gap, not enclosing the whole wheel, leaving a little bit of a gap gives you the lower drag advantage, but also gives you brake cooling flow as well. And if you look at current EVs, uh, I think this one's a Lucid. You look at current EVs, you'll see they don't enclose the whole wheel. They do leave a little bit of gap, uh, like in, in this example, for both um, uh, brake cooling and in some designs so that the airflow can flow out through the wheels from under the car. Not every car does that, incidentally, but some cars do. Furthermore, if you think about it, your wheel design at the front and the back should not be the same if you are chasing lowest aerodynamic drag. The airflow patterns are different at the front of the car than they are at the back of the car. So for example, if we look at the back of the car, it's going to be very hard to get attached flow across that wheel and onto the back bodywork anyway. Boundary layers getting thicker as you go towards the back of the car. Keeping flow attached gets harder and harder. Whereas at the front of the car, you can usually get that flow attached. And so this McLaren Speedtail uses different design wheels front and back. And you'll see that becoming much more common, I think, in the next few years as manufacturers chase lowest possible drag. The other way of decreasing total drag is to change that projected frontal area. Remember, the tyres are part of that projected frontal area. So if we use narrower tyres, we decrease projected frontal area and we will decrease drag. Now that assumes everything else in the airflow stays the same. Sometimes, again, life is complex. If you go for narrower tyres and they've got a squarer edge, a squarer shoulder profile, that causes flow to separate more and you don't get the drag reduction you expected. But typically, narrower tyres will give you lower drag. The other way of lowering drag is also lowering, and that is to lower the car. If you lower the car, there's less exposed tyre area at the front. You might have started with that much exposed tyre area. If you lower the car an inch, you've now only got that much. If you lower the car another inch, you've now only got that much. So you're decreasing the projected frontal area of the car. Now, lowering the car may have other aerodynamic advantages as well, especially if you have a full smooth under tray. But here we're just concerned with decreasing the exposed area of the tyres and therefore decreasing projected frontal area. Here's a car that uh, I built a few years ago. It's now come off the road. All the Honda Insight uh, fans will be disappointed to know. Uh, this is a car that I fitted with air suspension and it automatically lowers itself over 50 miles an hour, 80 kilometers an hour. So it decreases aerodynamic drag by automatically lowering the suspension. And uh, uh, obviously that decreases the exposed frontal area of the tires. Another car that I modified is uh, my Nissan Note Nismo. In this case, it had uh, very uh, much exposed spokes in the wheels. And I have fitted uh, semi-concealing hubcaps. And these are actually uh, pizza dish lids. They're not the pizza dishes themselves, they're the lids that go over the top of pizza dishes, which gives you the advantage, if I can just bring the mouse up here, you just have a little rolled rim around the flat disc, which is quite elegant. And I've attached these using a central fastener and a little washer and a nut that goes behind the wheel. And uh, these will decrease aerodynamic drag if you test. And my book shows testing of, of these, uh, these pizza dish, pizza dish cover covers, uh, pizza dish lid covers. Um, I've actually got uh, aerodynamic testing in the book that shows the uh, improvement in flow over the wheel and past the wheel. And I think they could look quite good. They remind me a little bit of the aerodynamic covers of the uh, some of the racing Porsches of the, the 1980s and perhaps even the 1970s. So uh, these, these are an easy way of uh, reducing aerodynamic drag. 
So overall, wheels and tyres are responsible for about 30% of aerodynamic drag on current cars, and that's an enormous amount. There are three different types of drag caused by wheels and tyres. The churning up of the air, the whirling dervish, if you like, the disrupting of body flows behind the wheels on the sides, and increasing projected frontal area. They, they make up part of the frontal area of the car. Contrary to the traditional wisdom, full wheel covers do not always give lowest drag. Salt Lake racers take note of that. And on most cars, and even current slippery cars, there are ways of lowering wheel and tyre drag. Lowering drag on a current slippery car is difficult. Obviously, the manufacturer has put a lot of effort in, but smoother wheel covers, narrower wheels, decreasing ride height will lower drag even on current EVs, even on current low drag cars. Read all about it in my book, Vehicle Aerodynamics, Testing, Modification and Development. I cover lowering drag, including covering lowering wheel and tyre drag. The book's not a cheap book. It's a big book. 500 pages. It's available from Amazon in your country and it is the single resource you need if you are chasing aerodynamic improvements on your car either in terms of reducing drag or reducing lift slash gaining downforce. It's available now. Thank you.